You're listening to the Cars of Carlisle Network, podcast episode number 101, Carlisle Events 2020 season, start your engines. Cars of Carlisle is your favorite internationally downloaded podcast about all things automotive. Darren and his CFC team are ever searching for interesting automotive happenings, real stories about real car people, and fun features to inform and entertain you. Each week, the Cars of Carlisle crew brings you show topics ranging from car shows to team adventures to auto racing weekends to behind-the-scenes human interest stories from car nuts that live across town, across the country, or even across the globe. Come join the road trip. Today, join us as Carlisle Events turns the ignition key on their show season. Darren speaks with the public relations manager at Carlisle Events, Mike Garland, to get the 411 on what's in store for the 2020 car show season. In this episode, let's see what the Carlisle Events team has been planning this year on their 82 acres of automotive fun. Mike will share details on what the Carlisle Events professionals are doing to keep everyone entertained, intrigued, and safe. In fact, if you've not been to each of the nine shows in Carlisle, perhaps now is the time to make that a goal. It's time to hang out with Mike, the voice of Carlisle Events. So, let's get revved up. Hello and welcome back, Cubers, to your favorite informative automotive podcast. I am your trusted host, Darren. So glad to have you back. This is episode 101. We're going to be talking to public relations manager Mike Garland all about the 2020 show season at Carlisle Events. With that, I want to say a big thank you to our preferred automotive sponsor, and that is Porsche Mechanicsburg. Thanks to them for always being right behind us and, and being such good partners of Cars of Carlisle. We thank them very much. Also want to let all of you know that prayers and thoughts go out to each of you, your loved ones, family, friends, colleagues, clients, customers, everyone. Uh, This is certainly a trying time and I know as we all remain somewhat sequestered and and through the sheltering and uh, quarantine situation, uh, a lot of time to contemplate, perhaps uh, a lot more time spent uh, with loved ones and to appreciate that uh, we all have quite a bit. And then hopefully you're getting a little more wrench time in the garage and getting to work on some of those projects, some of the cars, some of the things that maybe have uh, uh, had to sit on the wayside for a while and maybe getting a little more time out in the garage. So hopefully you're, you're doing that. But definitely wish everyone uh, you know, the very, very best blessings and, and prayers. That's thoughts with each of you. Continue to stay strong, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself, take care of those around you, and may we all continue to work together. So this week, uh, anxious for you to, again, dive right in, hear more about the 2020 show season. The trivia question, though, before we jump to that interview with Mike, and we are trying to honor uh, that social distancing, this interview this week, as well as probably many in the in the near future, will be done by Skype or conference call, what have you, as we won't have the chance to be in person as much. So thanks to you for being patient as we have to adjust our business to the new world. Uh, but with that, wanted to ask this trivia question. And by the way, if you've been listening to the episodes uh, over the last year or two, you will probably know the answer right off the bat. In what year did Bill Miller Jr. and the late Chip Miller have their very first car show or event, if you will, as far as um, swap meet? on the, at the time, rented Carlisle Fairgrounds. Looking for that year. Answer coming up at the end of the show. So now let's jump to Public Relations Manager, Mike Garland. Hello, Cubers, this is Darren, and I am on the phone with Mike Garland. He is the Public Relations Manager at Carlisle Events. Mike, thanks for taking some time to be with us today. Oh, it's so exciting to talk about cars and what we've got going on in the 2020 Carlisle Events season. Now, Darren, I know that every week, you email me the latest episode of your podcast, and I'm pretty sure this is kind of the start of a new milestone, right? Like, you just wrapped episode 100, so does that make me 101? <laughs> you are episode 101. That is that is a fact, and you are, again, 
dead on. You get those emails every Tuesday night, and you kindly uh, let me know when they're posted to the Carlisle Events uh, site each each Wednesday morning or Tuesday night. So yes, you are exactly right. And uh, in the world of podcasting, and you know you come from a broadcasting background, what have you, uh, to carry something forward and, and stay with it and not miss a week after you get into the triple digits. I'm proud of uh, I'm proud of that and that what the team's done. So thanks for noticing. Well, and, and you know, kudos to you as well. Now I think about what we're going to bring to the table today, and I, I I have to think back to when I was in in school, whether it was high school or college, and if it was 101, that was like basic introduction, right? Like anything <laughs> below anything below 100 was kind of like the remedial or refresher <laughs> information. So this is. Basic core knowledge that you're going to learn today <laughs> as part of Podcast 101. There you go. Yeah, we are now in the core curriculum, and everything prior to this was just getting warmed up, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, congratulations on the milestone. Let's talk about the shows this year, man. Let's do it. Let's jump right to it. Absolutely. And I know that uh, there's been a little bit of tweaking to the uh, the spring Carlisle show season. I mean, the season opener, I should say, with the, with the spring show. But then for the rest of the, I mean, you guys are full bore, pedal down on the 2020 season. You've been planning this out. It's 18 month lead time, usually from most all things. But talk a little bit about what's happening and the, the great things we can expect this year. Um, it's our, it, it would have been, spring would have been our, our Carlisle home opener. But we actually have two shows under our belt already. We, uh, we opened the year in Allentown in January with Automania. It was a two and a half, three day event at the Agriplex building at the Allentown Fairgrounds. And uh, we, we saw a couple of thousand people come through. And, you know, we always say it's, it's a great way to get out of the cold, beat the winter blues, but we all know it wasn't really a cold winter. So uh, it was just kind of one of those, uh, you know, nice weekends. People came out um, shopping, park shopping, swap meet type stuff. Real good time. Pretty low key, smaller event, but it's a great opportunity for people that otherwise have been kind of shut in and shut down uh, through the holidays and the winter months. So so we did that in January, and then we uh, we went to Florida in February. It was, uh, I guess, kind of the last taste of normal for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we do a show in Lakeland, Florida, at the Sun and Fun Expo campus every February. And uh, this year, we really, I think, broke through that glass ceiling on what we can do and the potential of that show. We had hosted a Ford club and just sort of do their own thing within the show last year the ncrs uh came into our event as well with their winter regional uh corvette show and then we also added a corvette fun field last year of course corvettes at carlisle is what we're so known for in central pa but florida had so we tried into that and uh, it did really really well and this past year, we added a Mopar fun field to it. So it was a three-headed monster, if you will, mm-hmm. between the Corvettes, the Mopars, and the Mustangs. Mm-hmm. And then we had a couple of featured vehicle displays, which were just a huge hit. You know, that uh, that Richard Petty Superbird that was part of uh, the Todd Werner collection at the Meekum auction at the farm show last summer. Now, that Superbird didn't sell. I think it was the car collection that didn't sell. And uh, just so happens that that Superbird lives in uh, West Florida okay. uh, on, the, on the Gulf Coast side. So we were able to get the Superbird to uh, make an appearance at the show. We had a Ferrari. I believe it was an FXXK that was about a $4.5 million car make an appearance at the show. And then we had uh, just another cool group of, uh, of display cars, a, a couple of cars from the Herb McCandless collection. Herb made the trip down with his son. And uh, just a really, really cool spotlight of different kinds of cars that, that A, you don't see in Carlisle, and then B, we can put it all together down there. You know, in Carlisle, we have a Ford show and we have a Chevrolet show, but there's not um, cross, cross mixing. You know, you're not going to see a, a show field of Superbirds mixed in with Mustangs in Carlisle. But in Lakeland, we have the space and we have the ability to do that. So you combine what was a really cool, uh, fun field of display cars with a large automotive flea market, and then our auction 
just was was awesome. I mean, I think about four million dollars in total sales at the auction, or, wow. or something like that. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but it was our best ever auction in Florida. Congratulations! Uh, and the one thing that stood out to me was we had this this Pantera car that was, I think, our second or third top selling car at the auction. But it also was the exact same car that was the top selling car at our new uh, Sunset Carlisle auction in Sarasota, Florida in November. So <laughs> somebody bought that car in November in Sarasota from us, flipped it in February, and I think they made about $10,000 on it. So that, that really stood out um, at the time because you know the economy was really doing well then. Cars were moving left and right. And then we came back from Florida, and of course, uh, <laughs> the world fell apart. Um, yeah, Darren, I mean, it's been so crazy with everything that's going on with the COVID-19 pandemic and whatnot. You know, we already moved the spring Carlisle dates to late May, and now we've had to move our import and performance nationals weekend as well. This actually just came down the line a couple of days ago. Instead of the show being May 15th through the 17th, we're going to have it in August from August 14th through the 16th. Now, the people that love to come to the show, they're going to get all the same cool stuff. You're going to have drifting and autocross from the team at uh, Nico Fest. You're going to have low car limbo, drift limbo, burnout contest. Important performance gives you, you know, an international spotlight of cars, man. You get the the Saabs and the Volvos and the Subarus and the Civics and Kias and um, everybody's coming together in one place, the Volkswagens, the Porsches. Um, well, the passport approach has just been, I think, brilliant. I like the fact, I mean, I, I do it every year. I participate and take the, you know, you take the, the program around and get the stamps. I mean, it's just to go country to country, world to world, around the world, essentially, in, a, in an afternoon. I think it's a, it's a great way to engage so that uh, maybe uh, a German only, uh, German manufacturer only person that's concerned about Opel, Porsche, and Mercedes may actually go over and talk to Saab owners and Volvo owners. Well, and that was totally the point, and I referenced just a little bit ago, uh, being with the company for 10 years, I think the Passport program may have actually started my first year in 2011, if not then 2012, but the whole point was we'd park these cars um, back in the days when there were two different shows, when there was Performance and Style and Important Kit. Uh, the Important Kit show, which is where the Passport program was born, you would park these cars by country of origin and people would just stay in their country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the folks that were buying a ticket were walking around, but the showgoers, for the most part, the core of that show, they were staying in their country. Sure. And, and we thought, well, how can we incentivize them to get out and get around? So this passport program was uh, created um, to to steal a phrase from or the you know the title of "Around the World in 80 Days." I came up with the "Around the World in." 82 acres, and <laughs> so we, we, we ran with that for a while, and then when the two shows came together four or five years ago, the Passport program was one of those popular features that we carried over, so you get a little bit of uh, the best of both shows with the Passport program, and then the activities and the displays that, that both shows have. I mean, you get a, a rolling exhaust contest and low-car limbo and drifting and autocross and a burnout contest. Drift Limbo, uh, I believe, is going to be part of the show again. So you get those uh, those those features where, as I like to say, cars aren't just part of the show or aren't just showing; they're they're going. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's we have found over the last couple of years that people who pay to come check out the show and people that are part of the show, I mean, yeah, it's great to see the cars just sitting there, but people like to see those cars in motion. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. And that's, in a way, you're putting the spotlight on the vehicles and, and the the object itself becomes a star, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and, and then we're going to spotlight 100 years of Mazda and 50 years of the Datsun Nissan Z. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be it's gonna be a pretty cool weekend. And there's going to be some really, really cool displays as well. I mean, we're taking a look at uh, 50 years of the, uh, the Nissan and Datsun Z, 100 years of the Mazda. We're also going to be spotlighting French cars, and it's just a cool international celebration because not only do you get the performance vehicles, which everybody loves to see in motion, you get the style and the elegance of those imports, and a lot of them are imports, don't get me wrong, but you get 
the Saabs, the Volvos, the Audis, the BMWs, the Citroens, things like that, the Alfa Romeos. They all come together in this one place for 2,000-some cars and a real international celebration. So it'll be interesting to see what the weekend looks like come August, because I don't think we've ever had the show this late in the year. But August is going to be a busy month for us now at Carlisle with the Truck Nationals the first weekend uh, in August, the first full weekend. And then you have import and performance, and then you get to Corvettes at Carlisle. But things are always changing. So even though we've transition dates for spring Carlisle and import and performance, as long as we are in the situation that we're in right now, all I can do, and I mean, we can repeat this over and over again, is to keep an eye on the Carlisle Events website for updates and changes, anything that may come up. But right now, those are the only uh, main show changes that we have made. And of course, with the spring show comes the move of the auction. Uh, we did have to drop the summer sale auction off the schedule in June, but that's just a one-year only thing. So all the details are at carlisleevents.com. But that's this show. But you know, we still have this whole June, July, and a very busy August of shows to look at too. It's the first time in our company's history that we have ever rescheduled slash postponed an event. And uh, certainly uh, historic times call for historic measures. And it was just the right thing to do, Darren. I mean, when you have 100,000 people that come from all over the world coming into the community, um, you know, we have to think about our employees. We think about the people that work the events on, on event day. Uh, you think about the community. And you also think about the customers as well. And it just made sense to try to, uh, you know, push the event a little bit and, uh, you know, give everybody a little more room to breathe. And hopefully by the time the end of May comes around or really the middle of May because of the important performance show, but but more so the end of May when the spring Carlisle uh, rescheduled date is that there's a little more normalcy to what we've got going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, and that's I think that's prudent with the the fact that we are we want to protect all those that are coming to town all that are living in town and all of you that host the event itself so you covered really all the bases from a just from a health and a, just doing the right thing at the end of may and everybody knows what spring carlisle is all about it's, it's the granddaddy you know, it's you know 100,000 plus people and it's it's 8100 vending spaces and you know there, there there's really no way to tell um, how the events of the world are going to affect shows and turnout overall. But we've heard so much positive, and, and I can't help but think that people are going to be chomping at the bit to get out and just do things once we all return to normal. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we can't wait for the summertime fun because now, instead of uh, you know uh, some downtime between import and performance and the court show, we're going to kick off the unofficial start to summer, the days right after Memorial Day, with Spring Carlisle. That's pretty cool. That is, yeah, that is good timing in a way. Without so you get uh, you get you get that, and then our our two day car auction with Carlisle Auctions is going to take place on Thursday and Friday, which is May twenty eighth and 29th. So um, the only real difference to anything that we're presenting with regards to the Spring Show is the date, the show, and the concept thereof will remain. Uh, the auction is going to spotlight trucks on Thursday, the 28th at 5 o'clock. There's going to be an all-truck hour. And then on Friday, we're going to have some special cars that we're working on that will kind of be the featured consignments for uh, for the Friday time slot. So 500-plus consignments crossing the block between Thursday and Friday, the 28th and 29th. The park shopping at the fairgrounds, the car corral, and you know, everything that everybody loves about Spring Carlisle. We're just having it a little more than a month later. That's pretty amazing. The fact that it's all still coming together and you guys have been able to, to be very agile and flexible to make that happen. So good teamwork there. Oh, yeah, you know, it was great teamwork. Tim DeMarc, who works with our vendors, Ed Bozeski, who's the event manager for the spring show, along with uh, Ken Appel, who helps manage uh, a handful of shows as well. All of these guys got together and brainstormed when it came time to talking about a new date because it was – you know, while while as you said, you know, Spring Carlisle's the, the the granddaddy, the big show. We have so much respect and consideration for other events. Now, clearly, you're not going to bat a thousand every time, but one of the things that went into the the date that we chose was looking at what other events were going on locally, regionally, uh, you know, regionally close, regionally a little farther out. 
because we thought about our vendors and we don't want them to have to choose, well, do I go to this show or do I go to that show? Mm -hmm. um, the same for the customers. So we really tried to come up with something that was going to be good, not only for business of Carlisle, but good for business of, of other shows as well. I mean, we're all, I mean, it's, it's such a, a talking point cliche, but we're all in this together. So, yes, you know, we, we, thought, we, we thought about these other places as well along the way. And, um, you know, we, we, we want everybody to have such a successful show season, um, you know, no matter who they are, what they do. That's a good point. In fact, this is the car hobby itself is like anything, but it is definitely an ecosystem. And one thing begets another. And, and there is just uh, one one affects everything affects something. So the fact that you guys kept that in mind and really tried to work accordingly says a lot. Yeah. And, and you know, now the flip side um, to having spring when spring is is that spring's going to wrap up on Sunday, May 31st, and then all of a sudden it's Ford Week. Uh, right. The Ford Nationals are going to run the 5th through the 7th, so for the first time in a while at Carlisle, we're going to go back-to-back -back with shows. It's been a few years since we've done that, but uh, we're going to go back-to-back -back with shows, and you know, Ford brings in 60,000 guests and 3,000-plus cars, and um, the National Parts Depot show field looks really awesome as uh, McGuire's presents the Ford Nationals for the 25th anniversary here in 2020 well he's a veteran of 10 years there i mean you can i mean i think it would be interesting just for the listeners to know when you do those back-to-back -back types of shows that really puts uh, a lot onto the team the staff and everyone to turn it around because you're you're striking you're breaking down you're and then you're getting ready for the next uh there's no time to even take a gulp of air or breath correct yeah, and that's so true, and I think that the, the, the big challenges come with our facilities team, and they are such a great group of guys, and facilities team members have come and gone over the last 10 years, but the work ethic has remained the same. And, you know, it's, it's one thing going from, I think, what used to be uh, Chrysler to Bike Fest or um, Performance and Style to Import and Kit, when you had – a similar structure to each show. You knew there was going to be a burnout contest. You knew there was going to be uh, a midway, you know, things like that. But we have to set up the grounds one way for import and performance in May. There will be a burnout contest. There's, you know, low car limbo. There's things that happen at the grandstand. Well, that same footprint that, um, regulars at Carlisle would recognize as being lined with those big blue barrels because we use those for safety and protection during burnouts and automotive activities at the stage. That same area for the spring show hosts the Armo Hot Product Showcase. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the first time that the facilities guys are going to have to get all that stuff out of there. You know, usually they, they, they don't bring it in until after spring and then it sits there until after Corvette. And then it goes away again in preparation for fall. So mm -hmm. those guys are really going to have to work hard. Our vendor services team with with Tammy DeMarc and Barb Boy and Amanda Barrick, uh, they work really, really hard to, to stay in contact and communication with our car corral vendors, our uh, show field participants, the, uh, the, the automotive flea market vendors. So, yeah, I mean, there really is – there's no time to catch your breath, and what it also translates to is if everybody puts in the time, and, and there's there's really no reason to uh, to have to put in every single minute, but there are a lot of people that do. Um, I mean, we're talking almost three straight weeks of work because you come to work the Monday through Friday leading up to a show weekend. You go through the show, then you come to work the next week for the next show, and then you come to work the week after. To, right. to wrap it up. So you're you're three straight weeks in the office prepping for a show plus the weekend. So it's something like 19 consecutive days of going to work. And, you know, in, in the moment, sometimes you feel like you are up to your eyebrows. But I'll tell you what, man, I can't think of a more rewarding feeling when it's all said and done, done with from a team standpoint. When you look at what we've accomplished and the smiles we've put on people's faces. I mean, it's it's kind of a corny phrase, but it's it's 100 smiles per hour. At yeah. Carlisle during times like that, I mean, <laughs> it's 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 hectic, but it's fun, and everybody works really hard. We've got a great team. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, best in the business as far as uh, pulling together and making things happen, and that starts from Lance and Bill and everyone in between. So, uh, great job to that. Well, that's exciting. I know that um, you know there's a lot more to the schedule. Do you want to keep keep going down the road on that? 
Well, I'm not even done touching on Ford, Darren. I Go mean, for we've it. got uh, we've got uh, professional racer Haley Deegan is scheduled to come. She's the daughter of Brian Deegan, who was an extreme sports guy, but Haley has kind of carved out a name for herself. In fact, she finished second at the ARCA race uh, in Daytona earlier this year. She's racing full time on the ARCA series for Ford Performance. So she's going to be one of our special guests. And then you have the special themes and displays as part of this year's Ford show. We're spotlighting uh, the 50th uh, anniversary of the Grabber, 15th anniversary of the Ford GT, a Euro Ford garage, and, and taking a look at the 50th anniversary of the Capri, and 35th of the Mercour. There's going to be a Thunderbird reunion, a Starliner reunion. And then, of course, Saturday night, we always take the cars into downtown Carlisle for the Ford Parade and Street Party. So... Those are just some of the highlights of Ford Weekend, but it's it's going to be a crazy time for sure when everybody gets to Carlisle June 5th through the 7th. Outstanding. Looking forward to that one. And it's funny to me that, and I say this with total, total respect for you know fellow car in- enthusiasts and such, but each show has its own vibe and its its own personality. And I remember sitting and watching the... Uh, up, up on the grandstands, the autocross for Ford, and, and, just, and then, of course, for the subsequent shows, and... It's just there's a different energy about it. Each each uh, show has its like I said its own personality, and I find that fascinating, and I enjoy that each and every time. You you hit the nail right on the head. And people that only come to one show at a time, or which I mean, it's obviously dumb to say it that way because clearly you can only come to one show at a time. <laughs> right. but people, people that come to Ford in June and then they don't come back until fall. They don't notice. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that that's what I mean by that. But it's the people and the staff right. that are at every show every other week. That's when you really, really notice the different personalities of the customer base yes. and the car owners. It's not just the mentality of the guy or girl buying a ticket. Right. It's the mentality of the person showing their car. It's mm-hmm. the mentality of the vendor selling parts. Everything is different at every single show. Yes, it is. So for anyone that just dismisses it as, oh, it's just cars in a field or blah, 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 just another car show, it's really not. There is something different for everyone at each show, and each show is different. I concur. No doubt about that. There really is. Um, one of the other, uh, one of the other, I guess, schedule hiccups this year as we transition from Ford to Chevrolet weekend is um, last year – the Chevrolet weekend hosted uh, the Carlisle auctions team with the summer sale. It was the second summer auction for Carlisle auctions, but with the date change for spring Carlisle, that necessitated a kind of a one-time merger with the summer sale auction. So uh, when we get into Chevrolet weekend, Darren, the 26th and 27th, there will be no summer sale auction this year. However, there's every intent to return the summer sale auction to the schedule for 2021. So that okay. was kind of a another byproduct of this uh, schedule adjustment. Okay. Uh, so Chevrolet, Chevrolet weekend, which is the 26th and 27th, is just at the fairgrounds, and it is what it was for the last couple of years. It's a 1,000-plus thousand, thousand cars. It's another great turnout of um, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick history on the National Parts Depot show field. And then one of the coolest things about that show this year is that we're going to celebrate 50 years of the Monte Carlo, but not just because of a display that we're going to bring together. It's going to be uh, an East Coast kind of national meet for a bunch of Monte Carlo clubs, and we, we can't wait. It's going to be a huge get-together. No, that would be great. In fact, that, that's a vehicle that has a die-hard fan base. It, you know, to be a Monte fan, you really – I mean, it – those those individuals really love their cars and and they know them just like everyone does. But I, I have to say that's going to be a great gathering. And uh, you know, so we do that. We're doing the 50 years of the Monies. Uh, we're spotlighting Novas. The Solid Lifter Showroom is back. We're going to have a featured vehicle display uh, with GMs of the 70s, and uh, we're also welcoming Courtney Hansen to the uh, to the grounds. Uh, you know, TV host, author Courtney Hansen is the special guest for Chevrolet Weekend. And you get the standard uh, goodies. You get the burnout contest. You, uh, you you get some of the other uh, competitions that we have at the show, getting across track activities, ride-alongs, things like that. So it's a it's a cool opportunity to again see and be seen. And along with the Monte Carlo celebration, 
we're going to have a parade of Monte Carlos around the grounds. And uh, similar to what we do with the American flag, which we've done a couple of times sure. uh, with the Corvettes and with the Mustangs, we're actually going to spell out a big 50, five and a zero with uh, Monte Carlo cars. So we're going to use, I believe, that same North Hill on mm -hmm. the east side of the grounds. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get a bunch of cars together and we're going to create a big five zero with uh, Monte Carlo. So that's definitely something folks will want to check out. I wonder how many – May or may not know, but I wonder how many uh, vehicles that'll take to, to do that at this scale and size you're hoping for. I, I don't know. Um, I, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I have no idea, and I can't, uh, I'm not even going to begin to guess. I mean, I know that we need a couple hundred cars to put together an American flag. Sure. And I would like to think that we want to make a giant five. We're not going to just make it, you know, minimally, minimally small. Sure. So we're going we're gonna to do the best we can to, uh, to bring every Monte Carlo together to be part of that. And I think that's probably the reality is that if you have a Monte Carlo on the grounds, we want you to be part of that five and a zero. And then we get to July, which is going to be real fun at Carlisle. One thing I'm going to mention right now, even though it's not our event is that um, it's still a, a car event is that the folks that had been accustomed to uh, doing the big Jeep show every year at the York fairgrounds, there was a, uh, there was a Jeep show that took place in York that uh, this past year announced the transition to the uh, to the Carlisle Fairgrounds. So uh, this coming summer in Carlisle is going to be a big Jeep spectacular, and uh, you know we can tell everybody the dates here in just a moment. But if you're a Jeep Jeep lover, you're going to want to check out. I think it's pajeeps.org is the uh, the website. You know we'll put over some good business friends here. Uh, it's July 18th and 19th. At the fairground, so I know I'm stepping ahead a little bit because that's just after the Chrysler show. Uh, but uh, something for the people to put on their on their radar uh, is happening at the fairgrounds this time around. So that's sure. going to be really fun for everyone. Great new addition, or just again, yeah, in light of everything, for sure, for sure. But it's also it's also like a good back to back. So yeah, so we get through the Chevrolet Nationals. Father's Day is in the rearview mirror. You're officially into summer. Fourth of July has come and gone. And now it's Chrysler Nationals time. And I'll tell you what, everybody at Carlisle has their most favorite show. And I think for me, and no offense to the others because I love you too, I, I love Chrysler Weekend at Carlisle. And I think it's the variety, it's the colors, it's the different styles of cars, it's the displays that we spotlight. Um, but it's just such a fun weekend at Carlisle with, again, nearly 3,000 cars that span the Mopar brand. And we're, we're going to highlight 50 years of the Challenger, the AAR and TA, Plymouth Duster, Superbird, and Pro Stock, and also a cool display of 1970 uh, Mopars. And the, the automotive flea market at the Chrysler Nationals is just crazy because that's one of those where um, for some shows we've seen uh, a tra transition and we've seen the, the face of the, the swap meet area change a little bit. For Chrysler weekend, we have to magically make up space to accommodate all of these Mopar vendors that come to Carlisle every summer. Mm -hmm. It's such a passionate group of people mm -hmm. that want to get their original parts, and it's it's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I can say, as I said earlier about, I have learned to, to identify that personality and that vibration or sense or whatever it is to each show. Uh, you hit it. I mean, that's that's something very unique to the Mopar family there. So we, you know, we we, we have that, and uh, Christy Lee is our special guest at the Chrysler Show this summer, so she'll be there as well. And if you you notice the theme there, you're going to have um, Haley Deegan at Ford. You're going to have uh, Courtney Hansen at Chevrolet, and Christy Lee <laughs> at the Chrysler Show. So it's the uh, the women of wheels this summer at Carlisle. Uh, kind of an unintended theme, but a cool theme nonetheless, because the car hobby really isn't just about the guys. There's so many awesome women that are part of this hobby, and uh, whether they're showing cars or racing or presenting content, um, the, the ladies of the hobby are just as important to what we do as, as the guys. For sure. Absolutely. Um, so you get through Chrysler Weekend, which, by the way, if you are a Mopar enthusiast, you absolutely have to come check out this show, the biggest and best of its kind in the world. Um, you get through Chrysler Weekend, and then there's another event that's happening at Carlisle the weekend after. It's not our event, and I will stress again, not our event. But if you're a Jeep lover, 
maybe you want to come check out the 25th annual PA Jeep show because uh, we, we, we've made uh, some good friends with the PA Jeep group. And uh, they're going to be hosting this 25th annual event at the fairgrounds coming up July 18th and 19th. Now, this is a, obviously an established show, uh, 25th annual and whatnot. But the show had previously taken place at the York Fairgrounds, and uh, there had been some changes with what was going on there at that facility. And the PA Jeep group uh, and, and uh, our team at Carlisle Events got to talking, and uh, lo and behold, you've got a Jeep show at Carlisle in July. So I'm not going to talk too much about their event other than say it's happening. And if you're a Jeep lover, uh, pajeeps.org is, uh, is an outlet to go and learn more about it, but it'll be another fun weekend at the fairgrounds. You know what the facility ha has to offer. You mix in uh, what the Jeep culture brings to the table, and I think that uh, if you come to that weekend, it's also going to be a good time for sure. Great to know. Um, so that gets us through July. I mean, this has been a, a fun summer of automotive excitement, right? Like it just makes us want to go outside and do something right now. Well, Mike, um, I know <laughs> I know the summer of 69 was a great theme last year and, and everything. Has there been any talk of trying to perpetuate that with summer of 70 or anything like that? Or was the summer of 69 essentially a unique uh, thematic thread that ran through last show season? It was unique to a point. There was certainly some interest from our enthusiasts on what we did. Um, but summer of 69 grabbed on to a lot of different cool things that were happening in pop culture at the time. Man landing on the moon, the Beatles, Nixon in the White House, Woodstock, you know, all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, you transition to, the, to, to 1970, and yes, we're going to do some displays that are 1970-themed, and you're going to see some branding, but we're not wearing it on our sleeve as loudly as we did summer of 69. So if if you wanted to say there's a summer of 70 theme, sure, but it's not quite the same as it was last year. Um, I think that we're going to reserve the next big theme uh, until we hit our 50th anniversary as a company, which is coming up in just a few years. I mean, this is year 47 for us right now, wow. but coming up in a couple of years, it's going to be 50 years of all events. So I think that's going to be our next really, really big theme. And then after that, we'll start looking at, you know, remember the 80s. I mean, can, can, can you believe that we're, we're almost 40 years removed from 1980s vehicles? No, I really can't. In fact, that's a little depressing. <laughs> well, we are. We are. I, mean, I know. What, what, my my at-home math has been a little crazy, Darren. I've been teaching five-year-olds and eight-year-olds math the last couple of weeks. Okay. Um, we actually are 40 years removed from 1980. Oh, my. Can you believe that? No, that is that is hard to grasp. <laughs> Kind of, kind of forget yourself there. But you know what? As we as we get through July and we head towards uh, the, the, the dog days of summer into August, um, truck nationals are back at the fairgrounds and the truck show is going to give us kind of what the truck show gives us each and every year, which is just a great celebration of central PA and mid Atlantic regional truck enthusiasts. You get the big rigs that roll in monster trucks. Um, the, uh, the vans, the vanners are back for a cool van display. The monster truck rides are there and it's just such a family fun event at Carlisle every August and truck weekend presented by a and a auto stores runs august 7th through the 9th so it's uh, it's just an opportunity to get out and enjoy mm -hmm. uh, i think the best way to say it for so many boys and girls uh, or or men and women mm -hmm. is this is an opportunity to see in real life that you played with when you were a kid that's true that's a really good i mean there's i've seen some things firsthand even i remember the year that uh the bandit recreation uh semi was there i mean just Yes. They do. I mean, there's just some amazing displays. And the fact that you have over-the-road truckers who will come in middle of the night and spend three, four hours under uh, spotlight waxing and polishing all the chrome and everything they need to do in order to be ready to go for the next, uh, for the next morning, that to me says so much. Well, and, 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 the, and the truck culture, the big rig culture, I mean, we're, we're seeing Peterbilts and Max and Volvo trucks, and, uh, and they're coming in. And uh, whether they're hauling a load or it's just the rig itself, um, they, they want to come in and hang out because, you know, truckers still have their limitations on the highways. Mm -hmm. But why go sit at a truck stop right. when it's you and, you know, there's no entertainment at a truck stop. Sure, you can go in and you can get a good bite to eat, um, get a shower. But we offer that at the fairgrounds and we give you so much more entertainment as well. Plus, you might win an award for your truck. So. Um, any of these over the road truckers, they come in, they hang out. Uh, we also get a lot of fleets that turn out. So you get like yes. R and J towing and some of these bigger, uh, regional and local, uh, 
heavy equipment type companies will come in and they'll they'll show off their fleet of trucks, their fleet of wreckers. Um, so it's really it's not just limited to big rigs per se. Um, a heavy equipment company could come in with you know a bunch of backhoes and and uh, bulldozers if they really wanted to. Sure. Uh, it just it nicely fits that theme of being the backbone of American society uh, in that particular portion of the fairgrounds. And boy, are we seeing that now. And more so than ever with the delivery and the fact that they're continuing to do their job so that uh, everybody gets what they need when they need it. I'm waiting for that toilet paper truck to roll up. To my local <laughs> job. That's for sure. How about that? <laughs> and it, it doesn't have to be giant. I mean, he can roll the cars. He can go to Weiss. I That's don't particularly right. care. I mean, I did inventory today. I, I've got 19 rolls left. I think I'm good for a while. But uh, It's all about the white know. gold. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> it's all about that white gold. That's what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> that is that 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 is for sure. Um, and uh, and it's it's an odd transition, but it's actually kind of legit. Uh, going back to what we talked about at the beginning, um, with everything that's going on in the world, uh, we've actually taken some precautions at the fairgrounds this year, and hopefully, folks will see it and take advantage of it to try and keep everybody safe, healthy, and sanitary. There's going to be more sanitation stations, more um, on-the-spot cleaning happening Good. Um, within the food court and the bathrooms and things like that. Um, so when you come to a show this year, please know that we're doing our best, not only at the fairgrounds, but at the Carlisle Expo Center to help keep everybody safe with extra, you know, sanitizing stations, extra soap, disinfectant, cleaning, um, you know, trash pickup, all of those things, uh, our team is really going to try to go above and beyond, uh, this year. And I mean, it sounds silly like, oh, well, we're being extra clean this year. We should be, we should always, you know, we're always extra clean. But we're trying to be extra, extra clean this year sure. to uh, to help everybody out. So, you know, be be, be uh, aware of that as you come to a show in Carlisle. Good to know. Corvette, I guess, is what's next, right? The Corvette show uh, presented this year by Top Flight Automotive. Now, uh, Top Flight Automotive was Corvette America. Okay. And... Uh, Corvette America essentially rebranded, so now they are Top Flight Automotive, and they are the presenting partners of Corvettes at Carlisle. So you get four days this year of uh, all things Corvette, America's sports car celebrated at Carlisle. And uh, one of the biggest uh, changes this year for Corvettes at Carlisle is our Chip's Choice display. Now, Chip's Choice is the big uh, building T Corvette spotlight, of course, named in honor of Chip Miller the late great founder of Carlisle Events. This year, Darren, the um, Chip's Choice display is going to be exclusively selected and presented by Bloomington Gold. Oh, wow. So the Corvettes that are going to be on display this year in Chip's Choice will have been vetted and selected by the team from Bloomington Gold, including the Bloomington Gold uh, event president. Uh, They will be benchmark Corvette award winners. So uh, it's, it's a bit of a hands-off this year for Corvettes at Carlisle as it relates to uh, Chip's Choice selections, but it's going to be a really cool display of some of the top-of-the-line Corvettes when they all roll into Building T come August. Wow. Truly the, the top gun of the top flight, the very best of the best. We, we might be the biggest Corvette show, but in the world of Corvette shows, they are the granddaddy of them all. So it's mm. a cool partnership to forge for this this year. and and kind of spotlight the the best of the best uh, for sure. We do the Corvette Parade every year. And uh, being that the Corvette show is in August, there are still some things that are being worked on and worked out for that event. But uh, we'll still have the burnout contest on Friday for Corvette like we do. Uh, there still will be autocross competitions. We're doing the uh, the King of the X autocross uh, performance. And... Um, we also get together on Friday evening at the Carlisle Expo Center for the uh, the Chip Miller uh, Corvette Dinner. And, and the Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation does a lot of fundraising events uh, to, to help raise money and awareness for amyloidosis, which is the disease that Chip passed from. And uh, most of those events are in New Jersey, but we do a couple locally. And uh, one of them is that uh, um, dinner, which is really cool because it's open to anyone who wants to be part of it whether you're an individual or a large group. And there are so many amazing restaurant options in Carlisle, but not a lot of them can host a large size car club. The Carlisle Expo Center can. So if you're a large size group and you want a night out with your friends to get together, check out some cool cars, rub some shoulders with some Corvette dignitaries, 
um, that's that's a good opportunity. So um, between the the C8, which will be at Corvettes at Carlisle again this year, Chevrolet's bringing back that big uh, box that they brought to yeah, Corvettes at Carlisle. Yeah, that was super impressive. Yes. Yeah, so they're bringing that back. The C8 is in and on the streets, so there probably will be a couple of fun field participants that actually have one this year. Mm-hmm. Team Chevrolet is going to bring the car back and spotlight it all over again, so you get that. Um, they are always part of that dinner, and uh, like I said, the downtown parade, and it's uh, it's just a cool opportunity to get out and check out the world's largest all Corvette show. Absolutely, that will be good. And I've been to the dinner. I mean. I- Go to Carlisle, or Corvettes of Carlisle every year. It's it's a show that you, even if you have a, a minor interest in, in Corvettes, you need to see it. So we get from Corvettes to, uh, I feel like we do nothing in September, but that's not, <laughs> not true. No, um, it's not. Fall, Car- fall Carlisle actually uh, starts at the end of September this year, September 30th through October 4th. So uh, you get to wrap up the season in Carlisle with Fall Carlisle and the two-day auction, which is October 1st and 2nd. Um, So for everything I said about Spring Carlisle, you get that at fall. Uh, It's just an opportunity to wrap the season up and people come and they hang out and, you know, get another chance to catch up with old buddies and old friends and make new ones and do the part shopping and and all of that jazz. And it's just a good, good time to be a car lover at Carlisle when – when you get to fall Carlisle and there's just something about that, that crispness in the air of you know, a little bit of a chill in the air and uh, we're, we're having a good time. Yeah, you're right. That's uh, and it's sort of, it's the exact, uh, it's the antithesis really of the spring where everyone's been cooped up and they are ready to get out and, and just that excitement of brand new and fresh. And then I find that fall is, it's been a great summer. Everybody's been traveled and maybe sunburned and, and they're ready just to kind of uh, back it down a gear and uh, rest a little bit, and it's just kind of that one last hoopla, per se. It's a good time to get together, and then we we truly wrap up the season. We have um, we have the auction in Sarasota, Florida, November thirteenth and fourteenth, Sunset Carlisle. So if you uh, you want to join us in Florida, uh, there's a Sarasota Bradenton Airport. Allegiant Airlines flies there. You can come and hang out and check out a collector car auction for two days with us in uh, in Florida. And it, it just seems like yesterday that I was at the inaugural Sunset Carlisle auction, and here we are talking about it again. Um, but uh, the season, for as much as it spans months, really from January until November, for someone that works at Carlisle events, it goes by in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I believe that. I believe it. And when you stay that busy for those many weekends and weeks, it uh, it probably evaporates quite quickly. Well, and and uh, you you day by day, I don't know that you realize how fast things are going. Right. And and what we've got going on in the world right now, aside, April first is next week. Mm-hmm. We're through the first quarter of the year already, mm-hmm. and. I've always said that when you get to the first car show at Carlisle, it's September before you know it. There it is. And the summer months just fly by, and the event weekends fly by, and I can still remember starting at Carlisle events uh, in in January of 2011, and it, it always it always hits me when we have a new hire in the office because we you know we 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 give the people the training courses and the uh, you know, the orientation and all of that. And I think back to when I started, the the boss at the time actually had a, a pre-scheduled trip to Arizona. So it was like my first day. And he said, here's your office. I'll be back in 10 days. <laughs> like, Thanks. Thanks yeah. for the orientation. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 10 years later, I'm still figuring it out, I think, sometimes. <laughs> No, and you're doing a great job of that, and appreciate you uh, always being so available to uh, to you know give everyone some updates on what's happening, what's what's to expect, but also throughout the season. I know that I sometimes will see you on the show field, what have you, but you're going 17 directions at once, being the voice of Carlisle events and everything else, but always make time for car, you know, really for cars at Carlisle, and I appreciate that very much, Mike. Well, and, and, and thank you for doing what you do, and it helps get the word out not only about great causes like the Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation, but even our important performance show this year. I, I, I neglected to mention the first time around, but we're partnering with uh, with a charity called Driven to Cure. So there's a charitable plan there to help benefit uh, a young enthusiast that passed away due to a rare form of cancer. So you have 
the, the charity tie-in at Important Performance. You have the, the Amyloidosis Foundation tie-in. And then, of course, and I would be remiss not to mention this, Lance will have my hide. Um, the Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation is actually uh, – we, we have a C8 Corvette to give away. There's a sweepstakes up and running now through the end of April, so just about a month to go. If somebody wants to win a brand-new C8 Corvette, you make a donation – and uh, this enters you into the sweepstakes, and you could be the winner of a C8 Corvette for as little as twenty-five dollars. So wow. you go to chipmiller.org, chipmiller.org, and you'll see the big picture of a red C8 Corvette. And uh, we we definitely want to put that Corvette in the name of someone that's going to love it and appreciate it. And we love the support that everyone gives us for the foundation. And here's just another opportunity, not only to support the cause, but to own you know, a revolutionary piece of uh, car culture. Beautiful. That is, that's exceptional. Thank you for letting everybody know about that. Thanks, man. CarlisleEvents.com, CarlisleAuctions.com. Those are your two resources for all things car-related at Carlisle, from our first show in January in Allentown to what will be our last event in November with the Sunset Carlisle Auction. Uh, we, we can't wait to interact with you. If you've been to one of our events already, thank you. And uh, we, we want to see you out uh, in 2020 and beyond uh, supporting the car hobby. And, you know, bring bring the young folks, kids 12 and under, get into these shows for free. Uh, we we want to keep the tradition going and we want to introduce young people to the car hobby. And any opportunity that you have to, to you know, bring your kid, borrow somebody's kid, whatever. <laughs> bring, bring a kid, right. get permission first. But right. bring bring a kid to a car show. Twelve uh, twelve and under, get in free. And uh, also, as an adult, if you want to save some money, you can go online. Most of our show fields, in fact, all of our show fields or fun fields, have a ten percent discount up till about one month before the show. And online ticketing is actually cheaper. Uh, well, online than mm -hmm. if you walk up to the gate. So if you mm -hmm. want to save money, there's really no oper no reason to ever pay full price for something at Carlisle when you can get a discount show field registration through about a month before, or you can get discount tickets online. So CarlisleEvents.com, CarlisleAuctions.com, that's where you're going to learn all about what we've got going on. Appreciate the pro tips, Mike. As always, thank you very much for your time and, and input and giving up basically your whole lunch uh, to talk with uh, the fans of Cars of Carlisle. So thank you. No problem, man. Look forward to uh, having some fun in 2020. You got it. Thank you, Mike. All right, we're back in Studio A. Thank you to Mike for spending some time with us and giving us the lowdown and what we can expect in this 2020 season. Check with us. Uh, we'll continue to keep you updated on any major changes to the show schedule. And as Mike said, most definitely the source of truth would be CarlisleEvents.com. They will keep their website current to the minute as decisions need to be reached with regard to any potential schedule changes that is very much fluid as is a lot in life. We have to be very flexible. So stay tuned um, before you're making any Carlisle travel plans to see if there have been any updates or changes on the CarlisleEvents.com website. Okay, so I owe you a trivia question answer. And the question was, in what year did the late Chip Miller and Bill Miller II start uh, having events uh, hosting at the Carlisle Fairgrounds. And at the time, they were renting it. This was for about six or seven years before they purchased the fairgrounds. And in that, uh, they had the post-war swap meet, if you will. And that was in the year 1974. They called it post-war 74. Okay, everyone, as I said at the beginning of the show, please continue to take care of yourself. Look out for others. Be safe. We want to have everyone here this time next year. Uh, thoughts and prayers are with each of you. If there's anything we can do to help um, promote wellness and just mindfulness, let us know. Reach out to us. We appreciate all the fan mail and, and know that you guys are all doing your very best to work through these tough times. We will certainly come out on the opposite end much better for it, stronger, wiser, and uh, may God continue to bless each and every one no matter where we are and what part of the world you are. Uh, hang in there. And we will catch up with you next week. So for now, I will pause and say, drive well, be well, take care. <laughs>